Hi, everyone. Good. I'm Ben. I'm going to do a live demo for you. So a couple things just to start off. Um, you should, in order to do this live demo, as we said repeatedly, you have to have an account set up to do this. Um, I'm going to run it through as if I am you. I'm going to log in to a brand new account that's never been used before and do it that way. Um, the steps of the demo are outlined in the handouts, which you can download. Um, so if you ever get lost, you can refer back to that. I am going to first kind of zip through the example that we're going to do, which is going to be a little tiny analysis of a half a chromosome of RNA-seq data, which we are going to run to completion through the entire ENCODE pipeline. And it's going to take about 50 minutes to run all the way through. So that's why I'm going to sort of whip through how to set up the job and start it. And then we'll move back a little bit, explain a little bit more about how the interface works. And um, if anyone gets stuck while they're trying to run it, please raise your hand and someone will come and help you. So here we are, logged in. So this is the login panel. <laughs> All right. So um, when you log in, you start. See, it's my free trial. I have nothing in here. This is sort of the project panel. So um, it, you organize all your things and projects however you want. They're like a folder, effectively. So to start here, we're going to go to the ENCODE Uniform Processing Pipelines project. So what we're going to do is wait for this to load. And we're going to copy the long RNA-seq and the reference files folders to a new project in your account. So this little icon here is to create a new project because you don't have any projects. So just call it demo or something. It's a little slow. Right. So you actually have to click copy into this folder. That worked. There we go. Done. OK. So now note that I'm still in the ENCODE Uniform Processing Pipeline folder. So I'm going to click this back arrow here. I have a new project. Click that. Oh. All right. The whole setup to run takes about three minutes. Uh, so I can go first. I'm in my demo project in my, this long RNA-seq folder. We use the word long to substitute for like getting transcripts as opposed to other microRNAs, right? So inside this folder, there's a couple folders here and a couple little boxes which I'll go into. Again, I'm going to explain most of this in detail once we get some stuff running. This little symbol is a workflow. A workflow is what DNA Nexus calls what we might call a pipeline. A workflow is a bunch of things stuck together. Um, so if you click on that and open it up, you'll get this image that you showed before, hopefully. Comes there. And specifically, the one replicate paired end is our example that we're going to use. So there's four in there. Some of them are for multiple replicates. Some of them are for single-ended, right? So the way the workflow is organized here is that um, this is a step. 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 Um, these are the inputs on the left. These are the outputs on the right. And the outputs are connected to the inputs. So, and again, I, we're going to come back and do this again if people have trouble. In order for this to run, to click the run button, we need to turn all these little guys in the middle, which we're calling applets, green. So let's just start. I have, this should be set up. So. This is a paired end experiment, so we need two fast cues, one for each pair. So I'm just going to go back to the beginning for people who are still having, having, haven't created a project with the files in it, okay? So first thing I'm going to do is click on the featured projects ENCODE uniform processing pipelines. So this is our sort of master copy of the pipelines and the reference files. So I'm going to select the long RNA-seq 
and the reference files by clicking the check boxes. I'm going to go over to the left side and click the copy button. So that's going to open a, a interface in order to copy to another project which for your for our purposes is a your personal project that you are maintaining. So we're just going to copy the software and the data onto there. So this little funny looking suitcase plus link here is create a new project which if you haven't created a project yet you will need to create one project. So if you click on that suitcase link you'll have to enter a name for that project. So I'm going to just type uh, in this case encode demo into the box, hit enter. Right, it's churning a little bit. So now it should say something like no data available here. On the right hand of this it says copy into this folder. So if you click on that it should copy the data that I selected in the first place. Might have to click it twice. Okay, so it's been now. There it goes. So you get a little 100% it's done. People still working on that? It's fine if you are. Okay. So now this leaves me at this project which is a project that you guys can't really edit because it's our DCC project. Um, and this bird beak over in the corner that points to the left will take you up a level or back to your personal account and the list of all the projects that you have. So because I did this twice, I have two and some of you may have two too. If you, they're just little files on the cloud so feel free to delete them if you don't need them later. Um, so you can see actually both of these have some data in them, 348 gigs. So I'm just going to click on this one to enter that project. Wait, give it a second. Spin the little DNL helix. So is anyone not who's trying to work through this demo not at this page yet? One, two, that's pretty good. Um, so from this, your project that you've created screen, there'll be a little folder. It looks like a little folder guy. There, one of them is long RNA seq. That's where the workflows reside. A workflow is DNA Nexus's way of uh, explaining which which processing steps to run in what order. So um, I'm going to make this a little wider so you guys can see it, but should be able to see it on your screen. So we have four here. Um, they uh, one is for single ended RNA seq data, and one is for paired ended. One pair of them, and then. They're two separate ones depending on whether or not you have one input replicate for your experiment or two. But we're just going to do the one replicate one. So you can click on that. It should open up a window like this. Is anyone who was, is this where we are now? We're good? Okay. So just to repeat here, our, uh, the way these are organized is that um, the, the outputs of the previous step in a pipeline are connected to the inputs of another step. So for example, uh, so for example this, this star underscore no underscore bam, right, when I highlight it, it highlights it there. That means that this bam file, which is the, uh, one of the alignment files that we're going to creating, gets passed on to this applet here, which is the quantification applet. The applets in the middle here represent software that's going to be run. So in order to get this started, and I think we have to pretty much uh, go through this once and do it so that we will finish, is you start clicking on these items here and filling in the boxes. So if you click on that, it should show you a little menu which shows you the valid gzip FASTQ files that you could select for there. And it's going to take a second uh, to find them. But uh, we're going to pick the one that is called like Hemi, if, you, if maybe yours is faster than mine. There's, uh, there we go. So there's two here that are described as Hemi, chromosome 21 Hemi. So this is the middle of chromosome 21, which is just to be a small data set that we can finish in the workflow time. So the one, and, the, and the, this is the NC file that these are 
uh, are extracted from. So we already take the one with a one Hemi version, click on that, puts it there. This also inputs it to the next step here, which we'll go over. So this, oops, don't right click, we'll get that menu. So now we do the same thing with the other pair of the reads. Same menu, just make sure you pick the one with the two. Does everyone get how to put files into the system? Anyone confused? So notice how they're both different, one and two. Now, we have to actually, when you're doing the mapping, you, you have to actually pick the correct genome. So these are reads that I happen to know are from a, 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 a mixed human sample. So I need to, and then the, we have the genomes pre-indexed for the various pieces of software. So this is the star alignment. So we're gonna click on that and it's gonna give us a bunch of choices of indexes to choose from. So there's a mouse one, there's several human ones. Um, the way that star works is that it takes not just a genome but also a transcriptome and uh, we use spikins for some quantification. So that's what all this spinach is. But if you just pick HD19 male V19 ERCC star index .tgz, Click on that, it fills that in. So we're gonna go to the next step now, so scroll down. Um, here, this is another alignment program, which is you may be more familiar with this top hat. The reads are automatically set up to be the same reads that you put in in the first place. So you see how when you highlight them, they sort of light each other up. And we're gonna get the top hat index. Now it's important that you pick the same index, right? <laughs> um, like I don't wanna have one aligned to mouse and one aligned to female. Um, and you should know which version of the genome, in this case HG19, that you're mapping to, because when you do a visualization, you don't want to, you don't want to have it drawn on the wrong genome, right? So that's that one. Now the next step is the quantifications. So this is a program called Arsen from Colin Dewey's lab. So that uses a slightly different flavor of the index. Um, and if you'll notice when it comes up that there's no um, female version of the genome, and that has to do with the fact that we uh, want to write out zeros in our quantification file for stuff on the Y chromosome. So it doesn't really matter if we use the male or not. Uh, click that link, that's there. Uh, the last input is that um, these two steps here are gonna create, take our, our, our alignment BAM files and make wiggle files out, out of them, big wig files that we're gonna visualize. Um, and this requires a chromosome length file so let's just take this one here, it's the right one. Um, so now, this one's runnable, it's green. This one's runnable, it's green. This one's not runnable. What that means is if you put the input, it says configure parameters, params, I guess. So if you click on this black box in the middle, um, this option isn't checked. So it needs to be checked that the library is paired ended. So we'll save that. Now it's green. Okay, oh, here, what you click? Sorry, could, oh, uh, male HG19 chrome dot sizes. Sorry, I didn't read it out, did I? This one? So these other two have just a little text you need to put in you can just put in here, this is a required field. It's just, it just to save some files under the name. So just type in demo in this box here. Uh, save it. And the top one, the star alignment, it's the same thing. So look, I'm all runnable. And I can run my analysis. So. Yep. Also, if uh, it should, this whole process should be on the handout, if you want to refer back to it, that, that you can download from the agenda page, but I will be happy to go through it again. All right, so I'll just close it. Okay, so starting from the pipeline, let's see if this is, should be blank. I don't think it saved my stuff. Okay. 
So what we're doing is, sorry for the, what is this, sorry? Oh, okay, yeah, so, I, I, I mean, to be, no, that's, that's totally a fair question. I just want to say that our plan was that because it takes a while for it to run, that we would try to get people started, and then we would describe the RNA-seq pipeline. Um, so, I wonder if we should. So, what you're going to do is put in the inputs to the various pieces of software which are in black. About the RNA-seq pipeline? Okay. Okay. That's. Okay, so I'll try to. Oh, oh. Okay. Sure. Sure. I guess I can do that. Let me just. Okay. Um, so, people who are at this step. I want to go back for some of them who haven't done the original thing. So I'm going to go way back to the beginning. But you should be able to like look at the, go download the handout from the encode2015.org website. And that has all the, that can help you follow the details while I help the people who are even behind you, okay? I, sorry for that, but that's just how we do it. Okay. So you should be at a page, something like this, that says projects. Right? You should have nothing here. <laughs> so what you do is go to the ENCODE Uniform Processing Pipelines. What? No, that's why I didn't tell them to run it yet. Oh, well then, that'll be fine. Okay, so those of you who clicked run, that's perfectly fine. Um, there is one little subset, that's why I didn't say I actually run it, which is that uh, you can specify where the output files go, like in another folder. So the people who are running it, you'll just get a pile of files in a folder, but it will work fine. It won't make any difference. It's just that if when you run two or three of them, then they start piling up with all these crazy file names. All right. So for these people who just got internet, so you go to processing pipelines here. This is the master copy of the thing, right? You copy the long RNA-seq in the reference files. So you hit this copy in the left-hand corner. Um, so you're not going to have these two. So you need to create a new project, which is this crazy thing. See this? Just name it whatever you want. I just named it demo. Type in demo2 in the box there. Um, so click copy, done, okay, so now you're still where you were when you started the copy. So you have to get to where your new project you created. So you have to go back on this arrow here. You should see your project you created there, right? So you go there. And then it's, you're going to go to, in here there's a folder called long RNA-seq. Click on that. Then if you scroll down a bit, there's these guys, which is the universal symbol for workflow. Sorry? How do you get files? So. I don't think we're going to have time, but what you can do is if you go to like, if you want an encode file, yeah, you can, basically there's an add data button if you ever want to put fast queues in your system. And add data will let you copy a file from a URL or a file from your computer. Please don't upload any files in this room now. No idea what it will do to the internet. Um, but that's how you get files in. It's pretty easy if you just like poke around a little bit. All right, so. Oh, this is the wrong one. Don't click on that one. <laughs> See, this is the two replicate one. Don't do that. Just missed it. So this is the one. Here, I'll make it wider again. One replicate paired end for you guys. And you should get to where we are. We're inputting stuff. OK?
press. Just got it? Yes. Okay. I'm going to go through the inputs again. Hmm. That's, uh, I, I, we, I, you, you're welcome to try to design the UI. I mean, it's not my system, so. Interesting that it's not. Yeah, I, I mean, some people like using the command line and just write your scripts, so you can do that too if you want, but not in the demo. All right, so you get the read one. So this is a list of possible fast queues you could input. I probably should have deleted some of these, but so take the one that says, we're gonna look at the two that say chromosome 21 hemi. So for pair one, just pick one. All right, I'll do it again. This one, ENCFF646CCF underscore one dash CHR21 hemi. Okay. And now the other box, we're going to do the same thing. But get pair number two. And now we need a, uh, an index genome for star to align to. So we click on that box. Uh, we don't want a mouse one from MM10. So we want a human. We're going to use the male, and we're going to use the version that is ERCC, which is our just a code name for the spike ins, which there. So I think I'm going to try to do this slightly perpendicularly for people who are following along. So we're just going to finish this top step here. So we're going to just click configure params. And this star here means that this is a required parameter, and that's why it's orange and not green. So you can put in any sort of text string in here as an identifier. So we used this for a while for like ENC, BS, 111, but it doesn't matter. You can put in any string in there, so demo is fine. Save that. That step is done, right? So this alignment step, just because I think we're not going to have time to go over the whole pipeline very much, um, is runs an alignment to your, of your paired fastQs against the genome that you selected. It creates, uh, this is a, essentially a, a, some QC numbers that you may see at the end if we get there. Um, it creates a regular alignment file to the whole genome. It creates an alignment file to the transcriptome, which is included in this genome. Uh, index. It's gen code version 19. And it has a log file um, which has other numbers in it, right? So we're just going to repeat that partially for the other four steps. This is the alignment of to top hat, which is just creating an alignment BAM file. The inputs are already set for you. So we just need to set the index. And again, we're going to take HG19 male V19 ERCC top hat index. Put that in there. We're going to click configure params. We're going to put in demo into the identifier for biosample library box. Now one's green. Anyone having trouble turning these two guys green? Great. Yeah. So the next step is the uh, the RSEM quantification, which takes the, the annotation BAM. So see if I can show you this here, because I want to do it anyway, right? So see how this output on the right is marked to that input on the left? So that file is going to go, when this file is created, it's going to go directly into this step. So we don't have to put that input at all. It's already been done. That's part of the, the pipeline is that it's all plumbed together. We're going to take the index for RSM. Okay, so here we just need the HG19 male V19 ERCC RSM index. Right, that's good. Still not green yet. Configure the parameters. Now this one we need to tell RSM that the library is paired ended because it does a different calculation. We use this piece of software for both the paired end and the 
single-ended, so it's got to know which one you're, you're, you're inputting in. The output of that file are, are what we are just calling these results files. They're just tabbed limited files with genes as, as rows and like FPKM, TPM, and other numbers there. Um, the last two steps um, are going to take the output of the BAM files, one from star and one from top hat. They're going to convert it to bigwig files. Um, and the bigwig conversion script needs a chromosome name length file. So we click on that. It's going to open another window. Get to pick, again, our genome, which is going to be male HG19 chrome sizes. I should, I should point out that um, you can arrange these in such a way that they're coordinated, but I wanted people to go through the steps of, of actually doing it. All right, so our, our things are, are all green now. Is everyone there at this point? All right, anyway, you still need help? No? Nope. Okay, we're good. So set the output folder. This is just, this is not a critical step, but it will, um, it will keep your files managed if you put the output in the right there. Oh, Mike needs help. Um, so in, if you go to this right side, there's a little file like a Windows Explorer thing. So you click on that arrow down in examples as input and output. So you just click output, for example. Or you can give it any folder. It selects. There's nothing in it. That's why it says no data available. It's an empty folder. That's what you want. So now it's, I've got a folder in there. I can click run. Do, 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 do. Trumpets. Okay. So this, when you run it, it takes you to something called the monitor tab. So that we, before we were working sort of the manage tab. And the monitor tab will show you all the jobs that you have running at any given time, as well as all the jobs that were finished, all the jobs that may have crashed, all the jobs that you turned off. It's a, it can go as far as you want. Um, so this is the master job. If you notice this plus sign here, it will show you all the sub jobs that this job is going to create. Hopefully, in a second, right? So the, these little lines here correspond to those steps in the workflow that we started. So there's two alignment steps, um, a quantitation step, it's a little bit hard to see, and two BAM to bigwig stranded steps, which is, um, which is the correct one. So it, it requires the, the quantitative, the, okay, let's start with these. The BAM to big wigs, I'm sorry, I'm a little thrown off. Um, the BAM to big wig steps require the BAM to be created, otherwise it can't create a big wig, right? So these will run automatically when their respective alignment steps are completed, which will take on the order of 25, 30 minutes with this little example. If you run a bigger example, it can take longer. Similarly, to quantitate the, um, the genes and the transcripts, um, we require the output of star, which is what we're going to quantitate. The, uh, the ENCODE consortium decided that we only needed one set of quantifications, um, but we wanted to do two sets of alignments, uh, both to compare to previous experiments that have been done, and also because top hat is sort of the the industry standard uh, RNA-seq alignment file, but we found in our hands that STAR actually performed a lot better, so we wanted to use that as well. Um, okay, it is now, right, 2.30. So I think people have gotten the hang of raising their hand if they need help, but I'm going to check here anyway to see where people are. If, because I, especially in the time stream, what will happen here is that if this, if one of these jobs actually like dies or something, like for example, and this can easily happen, if you gave it the wrong input, right? Like if you accidentally, it was hard, this, but if you, if you put the top hat, if you really go out of your way, you can do this. You put the top hat index into the star BAM, which you shouldn't really do, but it will run for a minute or two and then throw an error and it will turn red. And you can actually, from this interface, right, look here. So I clicked on the job that's one of the jobs that's actually running. It's coming up a little slow here, but I can actually view the log file that it's creating. So you can actually, you can actually effectively peek into the, the virtual machine that's running this job 
and it shows you all the output of what's going on. I'm not going to do that because no one wants to see a bunch of text stream, but if you want to do that there. Um, I think, yeah. The R symbol, the star alignments, which uh, it's a good, great question. I can show you also, like, I think I, I was trying to demonstrate it, but it's a little tricky to demonstrate here. Actually, I think, you have a question? Okay. Well, okay. I can go back here, but. So I'm skipping some of Seth's because he's busy. Skip that. So here, here's sort of a view, of like a on one page view of what you guys just ran. So, um, I mean, there were good reasons to do this first, but I did want to try to get it started. So um, uh, the code that's available that, that, so each of these, those applets or those steps here um, are just a little shell script that runs a program that you can download like Top Hat or Star, uh, sorry, or Star or RSEM. Um, or here, there's a step that runs, actually, these are sort of the steps here. Maps, this maps with Star, this, map, this maps with Top Hat, this maps with Star. This converts the BAMs to bigwigs. There are a whole uh, forest of bigwigs that get produced. Um, so for a stranded, um, a stranded data set, it will give you the plus strand and the minus strand. It also gives you all the, all the reads, including the, the non-uniquely mapping reads, and there's a file that's just the uniquely mapping reads. So that's four per, per, per alignment program. The star BAM outputs are also shoved off to this quantification here. So at ENCODE, we have a rule that we always run everything twice. We always run everything twice. Um, so what I've drawn here is this is that, so for every experiment, we have a, 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 some form of replication, either a biological replicate or a technical replicate, ideally a biological replicate. Um, and if you talked about how you had two, that we had a multiple replicate pipeline or a workflow you could use. So that effectively, for the same experiment, sorry, I'm losing my mouse pointer here, right? We can take the, the quantifications that are output from, there's one more step in that, that double pipeline, the double replicate pipeline, which takes the RSEM quantification file based on genomes from one replicate and the one from the other one and runs a, uh, 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 some, some QC calculations based on it. It does actually, we are currently working on the IDR calculation for RNA-seq, but we don't have it implemented yet. Um, but we do do something from Rafa Izrahi, which is like a, um, it measures the, the dispersion of, of the, uh, the, the log twos of the seq ratios. I'll tell you more about that. So, right? So we get, from each, from each replicate, we get two BAM files. We get, uh, if it's paired, we get four big wig files times two is eight. And then we also get two quantification files, for which the genome quantifications are, are much more reliable. The transcriptome ones are more for for reference, but they, it's, it's hard to actually judge isoforms from these methods. So you had a question there. So if your job fails, mm -hmm. is there a way to like go back and fix the file and start it up without just having it going through for a couple of steps again? What a great question. There is, indeed, such a way. I was waiting for someone to have a failed job so I could show them that. Anyone have a, did anyone job fail? Yours did? Okay, so then this is for you. So go to monitor. I can't really do it because my job's not fail, but it, it will show, sort of told you here. If you go to monitor and let it spin for a little bit. Um, so when you click on the plus symbol here, it'll show you all the jobs. So the whole thing will fail if any one of its sub job fails, but you probably want to check to see which sub job fails and look at that. Um, but for the whole thing, what you can do is you can, uh, uh, I don't have an example, do I? I can maybe switch to one, but what it will show you is that uh, on a failed job, when you click on this, oh no, actually I might let me do it anyway, I can't remember. 
There's a, there should be a button that will show up here, this shows up, which basically just says rerun. So it'll rerun with the same input. Now obviously if you rerun with the exact same input, <laughs> then it will probably give you the same error. Not necessarily, sometimes, sometimes, but you can, it'll rerun with what you loaded and then you can look through it and change what you need to change. Right. They're actually, the files that are specified as outputs, so that they're on the right hand side of that screen, those are not cached, they're permanently saved until you delete them. So that, and it will, it, it, the DNA Nexus system keeps track of what job used to create them and what parameters were used to create them. And so if, for example, and this can happen certainly when developing your own pipelines in the system, like let's say my alignment step works really well, but I have some bug in my quantification script, right? So I run my alignment pipeline, I run my whole pipeline, the alignment works perfectly and the quantification fails, right? So now it's not because I had bad input, it's because there's actually a bug in my applet code, which is we, we developed all the applet code um, at, well, with help of the, the ENCODE data analysis center, right? Um, and so, we had to sort of effectively, not really compile, but ship that code to the DNXs platform. And so, if there was a bug in that code, which there were many, which we have fixed them all, there are no more bugs. Um, uh, what you can do is remake that applet and then rerun that step dependent on the same previous input. So that's one of the advantages of, of having, and I think when, when that, that type of, of technology is very difficult to implement is one of the reasons why we use this system is because it's not that it's impossible, it's hard. There's a, you have another question? Okay, there's, sure. Yes, it depends on how you've implemented the applets, right? So for our purposes, we are, we do want to keep them as efficient as possible, but, um, but we, we, we gain a lot of throughput by basically running a thousand like literally a thousand, we can submit a thousand experiments at once, and if the whole thing takes five hours, they will be done in five hours because we have a, effectively an infinite supply of cores at Amazon. Okay. But you can also change the number of threads. Uh, you can optimize your applet so that it speeds things up. Okay. And last question: At some point, um, can you show us how to like upload FastQ files and download other kinds of files? Yes. Just that's the second time. So we'll I'll try to do that around. I don't know when we should, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely try to squeeze it in or find me if I don't get to it. So another question in the back. Yeah, so the question is that, um, is your top hat and star parallel or serial? So one after another with the unaligned reads from one step taking to the other. That's my first question. And the second question is the star index is very sensitive to the length of your reads. So if you're shorter reads, how you're handling, uh, you know, is the star index getting generated again or it's just you have, uh, uh, a standard star index based on 100 basis and that's basically you're using for everything. So uh, the first question I think is pretty simple if I, if I got it right is that um, what is the dependency of the star and the top hat alignment steps? So they're, they're completely independent. They are the no, they use the same input and they have completely different outputs and they don't interact. Okay, so um, what do you use with the top hat in output then? Because in, in the flow chart, you're saying that you're using RS, RSCM only with the star, and uh, right. so you're not merging them together or? No. So what are you doing with the top hat output? Well, the, <laughs> the, the idea is just to have a comparison for previous data that was done. I mean, it, what it has to do with the fact is that the, uh, the consortium or the RNA working group as a whole uh, really liked how the star uh, program performed, and to be fair, it was written by Alex Dobin in Tom Tajeris' lab, but other groups want, who use Top Hat mostly wanted to compare the results directly at the BAM level, but they weren't worried about producing the quantifications for it. So your second question is a technical star detail about the length of the reads, right? Yes. So I don't think we take that into account, but since Alex helped us write the pipelines. Um, also, almost all of the, uh, the, the, the current RNA-seq data we're running through it is pretty much the same length because it's done by the same people, but 
That's a good point. We might have to remake the indexes for that. Yeah, for, for the users, you know, because yeah, yeah. for you, it's the same length for the users. So, like, you think it's different at 36 and 100, or? Yes. Okay. Yes, anything above 100, it should be okay. Yeah. But anything below 100, if you have 50 or 60 bases, you know, so around that range, uh, the star index uh, really. Thanks. That's really useful to know. I, I did not know that. So there's a question. There's a question that's been asked by a couple of people. So I wanted to sure. bring it up for everyone because you may have the same question. Uh, the question basically is: Do we have a pipeline for paired and unstranded libraries? And as a defined ENCODE uniform processing pipeline, we do not because all the ENCODE RNA seq data that's been generated by the consortium is either single and unstranded or paired and stranded. And so that's why the pipelines that you see in the ENCODE uniform processing um, folder, pipeline folder, are those. However, you can take a look at the parameters for the single and unstranded, take a look at those. It is essentially the same software components. You can look at the parameters, you can modify the apps, the applets. Well, um, we actually did have a few test examples that were those, the other two, so paired, unstranded, paired, unstranded, and unpaired, stranded. Um, sorry. <laughs> But uh, we didn't actually, I, it was already four, four pipelines, it was already too many. But you can actually, I don't even think you need to do okay. any coding. I think you can just rearrange the steps in those pipelines and make a new workflow, and it, it would work if you needed that. If someone has a specific use case, I'll show you how to do it. We, I guess we could publish them too, and if we could organize it in such a way. So yeah, but I think that, that the point that, I, that Ben addressed was also the one that I wanted to bring up. It, part of the beauty of the DNA Nexus platform is that you can mix and match applets that are public to make the workflow that you know you want to run your data through. All right. So, so approximately forty minutes ago, we were supposed to have Seth talk about ChipSeq. <laughs> it's okay. That that that's actually we we have this built in. So I think you want to go back and do that, or you want to skip out. Uh, let's. See how long my job has been running. Let's do that. Um, because I think we can analyze it. So it's been running 10 minutes. So I believe that the earliest we can visualize is about 30 minutes, which is probably going to finish us up. So there's a couple options. One, I can, I can go to, I, I have an example of this already completed in a different account. So I can show you how to take the bigwig file and draw it to to draw it on the UC Santa Cruz browser, which is kind of cool. Or we can have Seth come up, and we can talk more about the pipelines in general without, in sort of a less workshoppy way. But, okay, sounds good to me. 